Oh, I was hoping that you guys would just play mystical through my <laughs> 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 like you did, Scott. I would love it. Um, I am so happy to be here. I uh, I got halfway here tonight from Hollywood, and I realized that I completely forgot to enjoy my twenties. <laughs> <laughs> It was, just, it was just here. What happened? Uh, it's true. I, I spent the whole decade worrying, you know, about everything. Mostly my weight, what people thought of me, and will the hippie musician be monogamous? <laughs> oh, he won't. You guys, he won't. Anybody in their 20s, he's not going to. Spoiler alert. I know there's a lot of you probably pining away over some hippie musician he's not I feel like that's the main thing I'm gonna teach my daughter if I ever have one it's just like he will cheat on you like he will he's going to Burning Man he's gonna meet a fire dancer she's gonna hula hoop and be very sexy he will cheat on you okay beyond that you can get a sliding scale therapist in your 30s you'll figure it out infinitely. you know what I mean anybody else have one of those this is just a side note not a joke but like I have one of those where I go and it's like $35 and you get 50 minutes you know which is not enough time to solve any problem ever right you know and so it's just enough time to like open up enough to explain the problem and start sobbing and then you see them start to look at the clock. And like, okay, it's time to run up. But, you know, if you're on a budget over like eight sessions, you can kind of start to work stuff out. You know what I mean? So just like relax. It's fine, you know? Um, and it is it is great because now that I'm in my 30s, I don't worry about much at all. Like the only stuff I worry about is aging, cancer. Will I become an alcoholic? <laughs> so... I am chill as fuck, you know, and um, I do worry about becoming an alcoholic a lot. You guys know that song, maybe you guys can play it later, the, the, and it's like, now where are my alcoholics at? You know, and I, I always want to be like, in my family. I, <laughs> you can stop yelling, I know exactly where they are. Um, it, it makes it hard to enjoy, because there's a lot of alcohol in my family, it makes it hard to enjoy happy hour, or just coming out and getting a beer tonight, because it's, it's just like, oh, it's this huge anxiety-inducing acrobatic routine in my mind where I'm like, okay, what's today? Thursday, okay, well, Monday I had wine, because it was the Bachelorette, Tuesday I had IPA, because I like IPA, I didn't drink last night, but it's Thursday, it's not even the weekend. How many times a week can you drink before you're homeless in Reno? Like, what is that number? <laughs> if I could just know that definitively, then I would just stick to that and I would be fine. Come on, guys, we're having fun, right? Come on, right? Just light stories about our family, huh? Um, yeah, so, oh, I, I'm intimidated by dads. Anybody else intimidated by... Oh, I'm sorry, you all come from two-parent households. You're all happy with your two-parent households. You know, my parents divorced when I was two, and so I had fun weekend adventure dad, right? So he'd come over on the weekend, he'd pick me up, he'd take me to the library, the park, Olive Garden, you know, and he'd drop me off and he'd be free to go bang Latinas in Anaheim. You know? I'm gonna tell him about Covina. I think he would like it. I think he would like Covina. Um, and so, it, you know, it was a great situation for him and for me, everybody was happy. But my friends had the dads who just lived there all the time. And I would go over, this is true, I would go over for play dates and I would, and they would be just in the living room after work, like tired, drinking a beer. And I would walk in and I'd be like, who are these men? <laughs> yeah, they're so serious. Oh. And they never seemed happy to see the mom, you know? There's just like this tension, and it's when I became a big proponent of divorce. And uh, I would print out little pamphlets. I was like a little mini Jehovah's Witness. For, um, for, no, I didn't really. I was too afraid to talk to them. They terrified me. Um, yeah, so anyway, oh, so I realized though that my only real positive role model for a happy married dad was Cliff Huxtable. I was thinking about this reason. Bill Cosby was my, my role model because I just, oh, him and Claire, it was just like they had it figured out. They made up dance routines in their living room, which is a universal sign of a healthy sex life. I think we all 
we can all agree on that, you know? And then daddy turned out to be a rapist, and it was very confusing for me. And I'm married now. How the hell did I pick out this guy? I have no frame of reference, you know, but I think he's wonderful. He's here. It's his birthday tonight, you guys. Yeah. I think he's getting very nervous and talking about all the hippies that I used to date and whatever. Um, anyway, but so I don't, I think he's a great guy. I think. I don't think he's a rapist, you know. But every time he leaves the house, I do do a quick, like, quaalude pat down just to make sure you know, because I don't know. I have no frame of reference. And he always says I'm overreacting. I'm like, that's something a rapist would say. You know what I mean? Thank you so much, everybody.